knitting friends and welcome to Ina Knits. Um, my name is Ina, I am a Norwegian, I live in Trøndelag, Norway and I knit a lot. And I love everything, woolly, yarny, knitting, sometimes crochet and um, yeah, that's my passion, my hobby passion. <laughs> And I love to share with you what I make and what I'm up to. So this is my little corner of the YouTubes where I share everything about my yarny knitting passion with you. So a warm welcome. I haven't been posting a video for uh, some weeks. Um, I was definitely going to, but life has definitely happened i uh, there has been some rather dramatic or yeah uh, challenging uh weeks um for my family um my lovely 10 year old son he has been very ill and he was just suddenly uh, rushed to the hospital and uh, yeah it was uh, kind of dramatic because uh, he was acting very normally and then suddenly he just had severe cramps uh, in his um, stomach and uh yeah became just extremely unwell out of the sudden so yeah he was rushed to the hospital and uh he stayed there for almost a week and they spent a good four days trying to figure out what was wrong with him and uh, yeah turned out he had pneumonia uh, with some complications and um, so that's treatable fortunately and he is uh, on the mend now and uh, getting better every day and he is slowly turning back to everyday life going back to school and everything uh, the strange thing was that he didn't have any symptoms of pneumonia prior to this so it came rather out of the blue i think it's something called a silent pneumonia turns out he has uh, some sort of lung condition in addition to the pneumonia uh, we didn't know about that uh, something that he's born with and um, it won't probably affect him um, but yeah it definitely contributed to the to the illness um and yeah it's something that we need to be a little bit aware of i guess so yeah that uh, was one uh, hell of a week <laughs> sorry my language um and uh yeah i sometimes myself have difficulties with migraines and uh, sometimes sorry a little bit sniffy uh, sometimes i have a certain degree of fatigue and i was definitely not better after that week uh, in the hospital with my son so yeah i've been on medications and trying to take things things a little bit slow and being mindful about what I spend my energy and my time on but now I am so happy to be back um, talking to you again and thank you from the bottom of my heart for all of the well wishes and love and support um, I have received 
um, I posted uh, a story from the hospital uh, on Instagram and you guys are just so kind and sweet and I yeah kind of overwhelmed of all of the the pouring of love uh, my way when uh, when I was in the hospital just watching over my boy and yeah that was very very heartwarming so thank you and uh, yeah you can find me <laughs> On Instagram as ina.nits that's my profile over there so and I'm Ina Pina on Ravelry so if you wish please head over there and uh, friend me if you like and I love to hear from you so if you have any questions or comments uh, to this episode don't hesitate to post them as a comment on this video and I read all the comments and I'm super grateful for your feedback and I put a little heart on every comment to just to um, let you know that I've read them and sometimes I reply if especially if there's a question or um, a comment that needs feedback and then I will of course uh, do so but um, yeah I'm just very very um, grateful for interacting with uh, you lovely lovely viewers of my little podcast thank you I have been knitting a lot um, knitting is my way of dealing with stress and uh, dealing with uh, all of the emotions even when I'm happy uh, so I tend to go to my knitting uh, to get peace and quiet or even to just de-stress after a hectic day. So I have been knitting a lot and uh, yeah, fortunately I remembered to bring my knitting to the hospital. So <laughs> oh, that was uh, essential. Uh, enabled um, in order to cope with um, everything that uh, went on there. Um, first of all, I'm wearing um, my chunky uh, V-neck Dahlia cardigan. I believe that's the name. It's this beautiful lace uh, lace yoke cardigan that I knitted uh, in spring and early summer and I'm just so so happy with this cardigan I've used it a lot actually and yeah it's got this three quarter length uh, balloon sleeves or slight balloon at least so it's not too hot but at the same time it's uh, great to just throw on when it's a little bit chilly. Uh, the yarn is um, it's a alpaca, I think it's a brushed alpaca yarn. It's a discontinued brand. No, not brand, but it's a discontinued yarn from Sonnes. So so that's what I'm wearing and I have another finished garment which is kind of exciting and it is another Renanculus. So this is how my Renanculus that I showed you last time turned out. It is quite airy and light, although I used a um, mix of two yarns. You can probably see that the, the kind of subtle marl going on there. So I used a combination of 
this yarn, which is um, merino cotton blend. I think it's a 50-50 or 55-45. Uh, it's from Dalegarn. It's Lerke, a witch and brand. And this, it's a kind of a terracotta color. And I had only six balls of that yarn. And I figured it will be a little bit, um, I wouldn't meet gauge with the recommended needles uh, if I only use that yarn on its own. So I decided to pair it with a, a silk merino yarn that I had in my stash and it's an old, old, old yarn. So it's not that easy to see. But I have a small, small, piece of it left here. So these are the two yarns that I used together. So it's a kind of cold, bright pink uh, together with the terracotta. And I really enjoyed the finished garment. I think it turned out so nice. Um, and originally I thought that um, the, the Lerke yarn would be the limiting factor as I only had six balls and I, I think I needed, I didn't have enough yardage. I knew that from the start, but I, I thought that I could just, as you, you knit this sweater top down and you add the Add the arms at the end. It's kind of easy just to stop whenever you run run out of yarn. Uh, but I I really thought that I would be able to squeeze out um, at least three quarters length sleeves for this um, sweater. But at the end, it didn't go that way. <laughs> so yeah, I had to stop right there and. I even ran out, yeah, the last few stitches of arm number two, I had to cast off with um, only the merino bamboo yarn. No, merino cotton yarn, but that's fine. No one will ever notice. Yeah, I have to say though that I, I did knit uh, this part of the sweater two times because I originally started the rib after I think it was 18 centimeters. Was it only 10 maybe? I don't remember. But I. I followed the pattern the first time and started the ribbing and um, and then I cast off the, the sweater as directed in the pattern and it was way too cropped. <laughs> no way I could wear that um, short sweater. Uh, so I had to unravel and I decided to lengthen this part before I started the rib. So I think I lengthened it with 10 centimeters approximately, maybe this much. And I think also that the bottom rib uh, was knit a little bit shorter than the pattern called for, but yeah, the total length of the sweater is definitely longer now than it was first time around. So now I'm very happy with how it looks when I wear it. And I will um, insert some pictures here so you can see. Yeah. Very, very happy with my new sweat.
So if you have been uh, watching before, you might remember that I have spent some time this summer moving to a new house and going through my yarn stash and I have sorted my yarn into categories and I have a one category which is DK weight wool uh, like woolly wool like non superwash wool and I went through that um, section uh, one night and I wanted to knit myself a pair of mittens because I haven't knitted mittens for a long long time and yeah so I was really craving color work and you know so I found uh, in my Ravelry library a pattern called Norwegian Mittens for Mimi and uh, it is by Anna Mazzarella and I have been wanting to knit those for a long time I believe it's a free pattern on Ravelry and it's written in English so uh, and the pattern said that uh, you needed two balls of uh, contrasting balls of DK weight yarn and um, by choosing or changing out your needles you could you could basically uh, change the the size by changing your gauge so I thought that okay um, I got a lot of single 50 gram balls of DK weight yarn so that that's perfect for like small project like uh, mittens so I put my sorry So the first yarn I found was this one. It is Sames Pergint. This is the yarn that um, my son bought for me. He had just gotten um, himself a visa card and so he wanted to go shopping and <laughs> It was so cute uh, and he figured that uh, he wanted to to buy me a little gift so we, he went went to the yarn shop and he found this one in this color and he brought it home to me oh, that's just so cute so my thought was, of course, that I wanted to knit him a pair of mittens out of the yarn that he bought for me. Um, and I found a lovely contrast color, which I also got only one ball out of. It's the new Lanark Mills, which is a wonderful Scottish yarn. This is the color Blue John. And yeah, so I wanted to make mittens with these two. So I did. Isn't this a wonderful pattern? And this is the inside of the mitten. It's beautiful. only or okay two problems <laughs> first of all this is too big for me a little bit too big I guess I could wear them but they definitely fit my um, my man my boyfriend even better with his man hands uh, the second problem was that when I finished the first mitten, I had definitely finished more than half of the ball of um, 
the Perigint yarn, the lighter blue. So I was a little bit devastated about that because what was I to do? I wanted to, you know, complete the pair. So <laughs> my master plan changed and I knitted the second mitten with reversed colors. And I think it turned out kind of cool. You see? <laughs> so it's definitely a pair. You can see that they're closely related, just opposite. I really enjoy them. And I even decided to knit the thumbs uh, with uh, a darker color as the um, background and the lighter color as the contrast on the first mitten because I wasn't sure that I would have enough to um, of this one to complete the first thumb with the lighter color and I think it turned out kind of cool. I don't think you see it, you don't notice it at when you know at the first glance but when you look closer there's, there's something funny about transition down here and the fact that it's the darker color as a background here and the lighter color as a background there but I don't think it's um, any problem um so yeah they definitely won't be mittens for my boy <laughs> um unless he wants to save them for some years before he starts wearing them so for the time being they will probably be christian's mittens and i will knit my son another pair So that's the second finish um, today. Uh, the third finished project is a pair of socks. And I'm just going to put them on the sock blockers. So these are the... Um, Christmas socks that I have been knitting on and um, the yarn is a wonderful yarn from Lolo Did It. Uh, it's her hippo for Christmas colorway. I think that's a Christmas color that she came out with some years ago and I got it as a gift from a lovely American friend and I have been hoarding it for a long long time um, but now I have decided to just crack into all of my wonderful yarns and make wonderful things with it and yeah so I'm so pleased to have this pair finished and I can't wait to start wearing them when we are approaching Christmas or December. I haven't decided if I'm going to start wearing them like in the beginning of December or if I will hold off until we are getting closer to Christmas. But never mind. I think they're just so extremely fun. And this is an MCM base. It's a merino, cashmere and nylon blend. And it's just so soft and buttery and wonderful. So I think they will be 
wonderful to wear as well. Yes, and I have been on a little kick uh, lately, actually over the summer, to keep working with my Christmas yarns or make Christmas related socks. I think this is pair number eight. Yeah, I think so actually. I have gathered them in a, a box uh, where I keep my Christmas or holiday themed socks. Some of them are made out of holiday inspired yarns, yarns such as this pair. And some of them are uh, simply made out of a pattern that is uh, holiday uh, themed. So I think that's a cool thing to have. Um, I love wearing my handmade socks. I'm actually wearing socks today as well. <laughs> These are socks that are made out of a sock blank from Stranded Dye Works. They're absolutely amazing. I love them. Um, yeah, but I love the idea of having a selection of holiday inspired socks, honey socks, to wear throughout the holiday season. So I guess I'm aiming for maybe 12, 15 pairs <laughs> so that I can change them out every day or every other day and still have enough for the entirety of December. That would be cool. Okay. Um, I believe that was it for finished objects. I do have a very close to finished project and that's a big one. Oh, um, there's some noises in my chair. I hope it's not too distracting or annoying. I actually have completed the last square on uh, the mitre squared blanket for my son and that is big news I think woohoo so this is now officially completed when it comes to square knitting I have added two complete rows since I last showed you this on the podcast. So this, this row across and this row across. So I will show you here all of the squares. So this one is the last one I added and I, I really think it's big enough. It is 12 squares across and lengthwise it is 16 rows. Um, and that is kind of the size that me and my son decided upon. Um, I really wish that this is a blanket that will, you know, follow him <laughs> for the years to come. And uh, he's just such a sweet boy, and he's kind of um, uh, he's very loving and caring, and um. He now started to talk about the day that he would move out and uh, live um, 
by himself, <laughs> uh, which is a big thing that he actually starts to think about it and talk about it because <laughs> he's only 10, you know, but he has been insisting for all of his living years that he will just keep living um, at home together with his mom for the rest of his life. <laughs> And I guess all kids are like that, but yeah. Anyway, <laughs> he really wants to take this blanket with him <laughs> when he moves out. And I guess there will be about eight to ten years before <laughs> he comes to that day that that will happen. But the idea that he wants to take this blanket with him Maybe to go off to university or to, I don't know, start working somewhere. It's a very, <laughs> it's a very nice thought. So I wish that it would be a size that is big enough for him even when he is fully grown. Uh, and it's, will it's a, Huge blanket for him now, but when he is becoming a full grown man, eh, the blanket will certainly only be more like a good sized lap blanket. But that's, that's fine too. I think it's just time to call this finished and um, complete the border so that I can focus my knitting mojo on other blankets because I have some plans. Yeah, so um, as I have mentioned many times before, I have some instructions on how I knit this my square blankets on my YouTube channel. There's a a video called uh, Mighty Square Blanket Tutorial with a solid border around each square or something like that. It's uh, in a playlist called uh, Tutorials. And um, yeah, so I start every Mighty Square with uh, five rounds of this. It's almost black, it's a dark, dark charcoal gray. And then I switch over to um, the other yarn and complete the square with that one. So, and it, this creates a very nice border around every square. But when you're finished, like I'm now, you're uh, left with two full sides of the blankets uh, that doesn't have this border. So I need to, here I have started knitting on the border to complete it. And I have to just keep doing that for oh, this side and this side. And then it will be completely done. I have been good knitting in all of the ends as I have proceeded. So I just need to tighten them, some of them slightly and trim them off. So yeah, I'm very happy that I don't have to sew in all of the ends now because that's boring yes um i also have some works in oops sorry i also have some works in progress so yeah Next up is the Farnham sweater. It's a pattern by Knit Pro Girl. And it is a 
sweater that's been with me since Easter time, probably. Uh, I haven't knitted much on it uh, during the summer because it's very warm and woolly and um, yeah but I have picked it up again and I have made quite some progress. I actually sat on the hospital and did Italian bind off and yeah started working the arms so I'm very pleased to have some more progress on this one. I want it finished. So here it is. I love this. I think it's a great construction. I love this color. I think it's uh it's beautiful. Look here, you can't you can barely tell that I have picked up the stitches and knitted the color afterwards. Um it's a very oversized model, or at least I chose to knit an, <laughs> a very oversized sweater. You could kind of choose. You could choose to knit a sweater that was um, more slim, slimmer fit or more fitted. Um, but I really enjoy the fit of, you know, the, the boxy sweater from Hohe Locatelli. I have the v-neck boxy, which I love. And I really enjoy the very boxy oversized fit. So that was what I was aiming for with this one. Uh, yeah, so I have been... I could probably do it less oversized because I think it's kind of big now, but I have tried it on and I really, really liked it. So I have been completed the sweater itself. And this is the wonderful Italian bind off. I really enjoyed doing the Italian bind off. I dreaded it before I started, but I thought that, okay, I'm sitting in a chair in the hospital. My boy is just laying in bed sleeping anyway, so I might as well put on a good YouTube video and do the work. And yeah, very pleased with it. Um, unfortunately, I ran out of the contrast yarn, as you can probably tell. I have la like a tiny, tiny nugget left of it. And yeah, I considered whether to do the rest of the stripes uh, with another yarn. But I thought, no. I think it works like this. Um, yeah, the arms will just be, um, just will just be with the the main color. It will be fine. I stopped knitting because I think that I might pick up too many stitches for the arms. It looks way too big and kind of odd that it's so, it's too much fabric around here. So yeah, I will probably rip back and 
pick up a little less stitches and re-knit the arms. I have even picked up stitches for the arms on the other side just to get it over with because it's boring. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, I will redo them because I want this to be as good as can be. Yeah, and the main color is Cascade Heritage Heathers in um, heathered lilac color, which is lovely. And the contrast color is, um, I think it's a blue face luster, woolly wool. Um, that I got as a gift is a hand dyed with natural dyes. So I only had one hundred gram hank of it and I won't get hold of any more. So when it was gone, it was gone. Yes, that's that. I have more. I have been knitting more socks. I think that I showed you these last time. This happy, happy, happy sock. Um, it's beautiful. And this is actually sock number two because here is the first one. This is first sock and this is second sock. Okay. And because it's a self-striping sock yarn, I really didn't want to um, start the heel and kind of destroy the striping sequence. So I decided to just knit the tube and finish the sock and uh, do afterthought heels. So that's what I'm going for. And yeah. I did the cuffs extra long and I actually didn't care to start the striping sequence at the same time or at the same color for the second sock as you can see because I think that's kind of fun that they're very similar but not exactly equal. Uh, these socks are living in my purse. I'm bringing them, or purse, handbag, my handbag. I'm bringing them with me all over the place. So I knit a couple of rounds whenever I have some spare time when I'm on the go. Or in the lunch break or yeah, when I'm out and about and uh, have a moment to sit down and knit. I pick these out of my handbag and I knit a little. They're very enjoyable. Um, yeah, I have the, the yarn over there, but it's um, very tangled together with something else underneath my uh, computer so <laughs> I will show it to you next time but it is a Whisper sock yarn I believe the name was it's a wonderful wonderful yarn also something that I've been hoarding for uh, way too long and I'm very happy to knit with it now so Next sock, I have had this wonderful sock blank for many, many years. Isn't it beautiful? This is a sock blank from Martin's lab. And I think that I might have been having it for maybe six years, 
five years, six years, something like that. And it has been extremely hard for me to start knitting with that soft blank because I just treasure it so, so much. It's beautiful to, to look at. <laughs> uh, the other night I decided to just go for it. And so I did. Here is the beautiful first sock. It is just a pure joy to me. I love this micro striping going on here. And that is the amazing fun thing about sock blanks. I kind of never know how it will turn out. You know, it's so random. And there's kind of a pattern, but there's no pattern. On the same, at the same time. So it's, uh, yeah, it's so much fun. And it's bringing me so much joy. I love it. And look at this cute little stitch marker or progress keeper. I just recently bought some new progress keepers from Auna Design. I will show you, where are they? Here. I bought these ones. I got the bee because I love bees. And a honeycomb and a plant, crazy plant lady. And this is a milkshake. And the other one was a boba. Is that what it's called? You know, with the, the boba in the bottom of the glass. And I got a little freebie. Very cute. And this all made out of Miriam from Auna Design. So cool. So I'm not sponsored or anything. I bought it myself, but she is Auna Design on Instagram. And she makes a lot of beautiful stuff. Very happy about that. One more thing. This is going to be a long episode. And I will show you just quickly. I don't know if you remember that I knitted uh, Christmas socks for my boyfriend. Um, out of this yarn, the Regia uh, Season Color, you know, this one, combined with um, Patterns Cry in the Christmas Red color. So I was left with some of that yarn and I wanted to make a pair for me as well. But I knew that I hadn't enough to complete an um, identical pair. So I made this instead. So this is the leftover of the main color um, of the other Christmas pair for my boyfriend. And the red was the contrast color that I used. Um, in the other pair and to make sure that I have enough for a complete pair I am using this one which is these are very Christmassy colors to me and I have used this a yarn to knit another Christmas sock pair for myself um, 
the jingle bell socks that I have previously shown you. Um, this yarn is a oh, Bergeré de France. I'm not quite sure about that pronunciation, but that's the yarn. And this is the Patterns Cry. And I'm just striping it. And then I added the heel and a stripe with the um, Regia Season Color. And I might do the toe as well in the Regia. Um, colored yarn. They're kind of Christmassy, aren't they? It reminds me of like the candy cane. Candy canes. Yeah. So that will be another Christmas related sock that I hope to wear this holiday season. Well, I've been talking for way too long and <laughs> this is a long episode, but I have been knitting a lot and I am, um, yeah, I had a, 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 a backlog to share with you today. So I hope that you are all doing well and whatever you are, Dealing with in your life is um, something that you can handle with um, good friends or with your knitting or however you deal with your challenging, your challenges. Um, yeah, that's life, isn't it? Sometimes it's up and sometimes it's down. But fortunately, most of the things that we experience in life is repairable and yeah, that's good. I'm just grateful that my son is home again and that he's doing so much better. Uh, it was a tough period for my mama heart. But it's it's going well now well okay thank you so much if you have been watching until now i'm <laughs> impressed and uh, super grateful i'm so happy that you are here with me even though you're not but you are aren't you it feels like it i'm not sitting here by myself talking to my phone now <laughs> okay i will stop rambling and i will let you go and i hope that we um i hope to be posting uh again in a couple of weeks i yeah i love to sit here chatting with you and interact so take care lots of love and uh happy knitting bye